Apple recently released their M1 Max with their own chip and some of the performance gains are actually pretty shocking. So let's talk about these new M1 Macs. Apple recently released the Mac Mini, the MacBook Pro, as well as the MacBook Air. We're going to talk more about the Mac Mini and the MacBook Pro as they have a little bit better thermals and thus a little bit better performance than the MacBook Air. And if you guys saw the prices on these, these are definitely going to be considered sort of Apple's entry level lower end Macs. If you look at the Mac Mini, it starts at $699 for sort of the base version. They all have pretty similar configurations that you can get across the three different Macs. They're all pretty much going to have the M1 processor. The only real differences are you, you can get a bigger SSD hard drive, like up to one or two terabytes. And instead of eight gigabytes of RAM, you can also get 16. And they call this unified memory. It's a little bit different than the RAM that we're used to in sort of gaming PCs. So the first question here is, what does Apple have that would be interesting to, you know, what you could consider a hardcore PC enthusiast like myself? I mean, I have a system with a 5950X with SLI 3090s, so definitely really top tier performance. Of course, right off the bat, gaming is not something we're going to be talking about here. The Apple Macs really don't have any type of gaming performance worth mentioning. The main area that really piqued my interest, let me give you guys an example. The Canon R5, which is one of the newer cameras that came out recently it can do things like 8k raw and it also has various codecs that are actually very difficult to play even on the 5950x sli 3090 computer when i try to play this codec and even like davinci resolve or anything like that it stutters it just doesn't really move it's almost like it cripples the computer considerably and i had heard reports that apple's m1 silicon much like the chip that's in the ipad was able to actually edit this footage and scrub through considerably faster than anything else that we've ever seen pretty much thanks to just how the chip is and with the encoding and things like that so i decided to try it out for that very reason alone and i was actually pretty surprised in fact it is true that when you use a codec like the canon r5 you can scrub through the timeline extremely quickly it exports everything very fast it doesn't stutter so the very fact that even the most powerful pc can't do that now this isn't necessarily because the PC is underpowered. Of course, 3090 is going to be the fastest thing you can get now. This really comes down to sort of the hardware decoders that are available on these GPUs. And the NVIDIA GPU just does not have what it takes to be able to decode a file like from the Canon R5, while the Apple N1 does. And it is kind of just as simple as that. But at the power efficiency and the speed that these Macs are running, it certainly is very, very impressive. Everything does feel very snappy, very, very fast. The different Cinnabon scores are definitely beating most other Macs out there even some of the very high-end Macs there have been people with even Mac Pros that have looked at this and they ask what's going on that such a cheap Mac put out such great performance it pretty much all comes down to just how efficient these chips are and they're really extremely powerful i mean even though apple is technically new to these chips and sort of computers as we know it they've been producing these in iphones and ipads over time for a very very long time now on paper something like an iphone usually will lose to a lot of android phones and different things like that but when it comes to the actual performance somehow almost magically it seems like that the software and the hardware integration really makes a really big difference and a device like that is usually going to be a lot faster than the specs would reveal on paper which is the same thing that's going on here you wouldn't think that a little mac mini would have such fast performance but in fact it is actually very very capable everyday computing feels very fast and like i mentioned before some of these very high-end video editing tasks like doing something like the canon r5 because of the optimization of the software like final cut pro even davinci resolve is getting more and more optimized for the m1 mac but of course, the Apple apps are definitely going to be the go-to for now. Things like Photoshop and Premiere Pro will probably come later. But something like Final Cut Pro can really edit a lot of these videos at a level at least equaling or at many times exceeding something like an RTX 3090 would be able to do, even in DaVinci Resolve, which is really optimized for GPUs. And that's going to come down, like I said before, these NVIDIA GPUs just don't have the hardware to decode these difficult codecs that the Apple chips 
course already possess. So it's going to be very interesting what happens during the next year and the following year. It's very possible that a lot of people that would traditionally buy a PC, let's call them the non-enthusiasts, they're not necessarily water cooling or needed for gaming. The people that are using it even professionally for video editing, they're using it for everyday office tasks for work. It's possible these Apple computers could actually be cheaper and much faster and much more efficient than anything that Intel or even AMD can really produce. So that's going to be very interesting to watch, especially knowing that there's possibly an M1X chip coming out next year. The current ones are about eight cores and they perform pretty well. The M1X is supposedly supposed to be about 12 cores. So that would certainly be very impressive and you would probably see those in the much higher end Max. And that's when I think, especially for content creation, Apple computers, at least for the first time in a very long time, could be very competitive in the more high end market. For many, many years, I mean, the trash can Mac Pro really wasn't updated until recently, until 2019. And while that Mac Pro is very expandable, it's very sort of a niche system. You really have to know the exact application that you need to use a Mac Pro for, or else you're just going to be sort of wasting your money. Because in some cases, something like this for most people, like a small Mac Mini or a MacBook Pro, can actually put out performance equaling or even surpassing some of these very, very expensive computers. And then of course, it's never all perfect. There are definitely complaints that I have from using these Macs. First of all, I'm used to, you know, a gaming PC that's going to have a high refresh rate monitor. You're going to have very fast gaming mice, even if it's wireless. Now, usually the Bluetooth on these Apple computers are absolutely terrible. I even use something like an MX3 master mouse with a little uh, unifying Logitech 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Because if I try to use Bluetooth, they're notoriously bad, especially the Mac Mini. They've had problems for many years where like Bluetooth things disconnect. It's just not reliable. You would think an Apple computer just works and it's intuitive and it's easy. While that may be true, if you're a regular user and you don't really want to touch anything at all, if you ever want to tinker with a Mac a little bit or do something that's really not supported in the ecosystem, it really is a very convoluted and a lot of things just don't work like they would on PC. PC certainly has a lot more support and of course, not to mention that these have very limited ports. I mean, on the Mac Mini, you're going to get two Thunderbolt 4 ports as well as two USB ports. On the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, it's going to be even worse with only two Thunderbolt ports. So you're definitely going to have to really make use of docks and different dongles, which kind of makes for a little bit of an unsightly experience as opposed to something that has more built-in ports. Now, the Mac Mini, it's okay the number of ports. You can definitely get away with it, but for a lot heavier use, if you're really doing video Video editing but hopefully in the future as more pro max come out i'm sure they're going to have some with more things supported more ports like the iMac Pro has about eight different ports for Thunderbolt and for USB, as well as 10 gigabit networking. So when we start to see stuff like that on these faster Macs, when they come out with these new like 12 core chips, I think it's certainly going to be very game changing for the professional market. Of course, this isn't for gaming. It's going to be for rendering and different things like that, even photo editing. It's really going to be more for content creators, but the price is also going down. These Macs are getting a lot cheaper, a lot more efficient, much better battery life. So it's it's not like the price is going astronomically high for this type of performance and it's really refreshing to see apple introduce this type of new technology in a lot more attainable products so in the future i definitely plan to keep an eye on the development of these products and we'll see in what other areas can they beat even much more expensive macs or more expensive pcs and if it makes sense for certain people to switch out in the future all right guys thank you for watching remember to subscribe smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video